Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Devoid Entertainment. I am here with two unranked but very underappreciated competitors. Uh, they are the men of Good Cup, Bad Cup Wrestling, but that is not their only strengths uh, because one of them teaches history and the other is a chef. He teaches something. He is an educator of the youth. So let's bring out one of them. Let's bring out Graham. Not history. Well, math. Uh, well, math is not my strong suit, but... <laughs> I guess I teach the history of math, so I guess well, that was it. I mean, I won't even say that joke. Uh, Graham, what do you think that you have it takes to win? Um, jeez, uh, very little. Um, but I know that I'm better than Matt, though, so that, that's all I need. I don't need to be good, I just need to be better than he is, and that is in a lot right now. And our next competitor, some might call my arch nemesis, but I would actually just say is uh, a nemesis. Uh, here he is, Matt. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Where are we from? Hello. Uh, Matt, uh, what skills do you have in your uh, bag of arrows do you think you can, uh, in which you could win against Graham? Promo skills, for a start way better than him at promos, you know, everyone proof for that. Uh, I beat him most week when it comes to Devil's Advocate, and I can answer any Devil's Advocate they throw at me. Mind you, you're not, you're not so bad yourself. You're number two to me still, but you're still not bad. And, and of course, I, I regard you as every 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 hero needs an arch enemy, of course. So. Just before we start, just remember to find to, you can find them at Good Bad Wrestle on Twitter, at MGB Graham on Twitter, and at the Mad Attack UK because I guess the Mad Attack in general is taken. Yep. Uh, which is very funny because that means that there's other domains <laughs> of the Mad Attack. You can regionally take that though. To be fair, I tried I tried doing a worldwide thing, but there's only so many letters on Twitter you can have. So. Well, we're just going to jump into our first game, a classic, one that they almost played a full game of, but uh, somebody uh, has children. So, uh, and we're here <laughs> gathered today on a day in which uh, he does not have to deal with them as much. And so here is The Price is Whack. Now, uh, obviously, uh, this would be a variation, but you've never played the game in full, so we'll just play the original. Uh, uh, the Price of Whack, of course, has been a staple of Devoid Entertainment since the very first episode. Uh, in this, I have found several wrestling-related items on the popular e-commerce website ebay.com. Uh, you will have to guess the price of the item the seller is selling the given item of. The person with the closest price without having gone over will get four points. Uh, if both of you go over, though, the closest person will get the coveted half a point. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, sounds perfectly clear to me. Um, I beat him on the two questions we did last time, so yeah, I'm good. All right. The first uh, the first item, WCW Galoob Hornby Dustin Rhodes MOC WWF Hasbro Vintage Action Figure AEW. Actually has nothing to do with uh, WWF or AEW. It is a Dustin Rhodes... WCW action figure. Mm, How much? It. Yes. Uh, it's a little beat up, but uh, as you can see, it is not unpackaged. So how much do you think somebody is selling this? This store? is from the uh, .com website, not the .co.uk, right? Yes, this is .com. These are all in dollars. Okay, I have my price. Oh, Matt's going to do math as well. He's doomed. I can do math. <laughs> I can do math, sir. America. <laughs> Maths. No, I, I actually just use the singular mathematic. How much How do you much? think is? Uh, my guess is $25. $25 for the grandson of a plumber. Graham? $15.99. Well, you can find the WCW Galoob Hornby Dustin Rhodes MOC WWF Hasbro Vintage Action Figure AEW. For four thousand one hundred and eighty-four dollars <laughs> and thirty-nine cents. 
Please tell me that. <laughs> please tell me that there's bids on that for they've got that high. Um, I wish I could, but I I, I don't think so. Um, no that way. is equal parts amazing and terrifying. Um, there was also the the there was it's like twenty five hundred pounds or twenty six hundred pounds. Uh, Jeep, yeah. So wow. So just to put that into perspective, that was the only one though. So oh, congratulations okay. on your uh, what are four, points? four points? Four points. Nice. You got four points, but we weren't even in the right. Yeah, you guys we were not anywhere near. That was right. awful. The, uh, next, you. the next item is AEW All In Event to Used Wrestling Turnbuckle Bullet Club ROH WWE NJPW nine one eighteen. Uh, that is not the 9th of January. That is the first of November. Whoop, whoops. Didn't see that. I hope. Signed okay, the by um, all in, signed by the Young Bucks. And Cody. Oh, Matt's putting a bid in for this as soon as the show is done. Uh, negative negative numbers do not count, Matt. I am yeah. not putting that. I am be, I am being sensible with my with my bid here. <sighs> I put it on my chest so you know I'm not cheating. I, w I believe you. All right. Yeah, the others win. Graham? $251. Okay. $251. Graham? Hmm. Seventy. Well, you can find the AEW All In Event Used Wrestling Turnbuckle Bullet Club ROH WWE NJPW nine one eighteen for twenty five hundred dollars. Wow! Hmm, man, wrestling fanatics are crazy. I don't know how, so, how are all these wrestling fans so rich as well. That's what I want to know. Jeez. I've got a funny feeling that that's what they're asking for. People aren't paying it. <laughs> They're probably being reposted several mm. times, I'm guessing. This is true. Now I seem to remember asking on the previous one as well, like how long is left on the auction? <laughs> like, is it like uh, if it's at the end of the auction? A lot of these are the buy now. Really good for at the start. A lot of these are buy nows. Oh, okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. fair uh, yeah. Uh this next one. ECW belt collection, all three versions, world title, TV title. Team title, FTW title. Now, obviously, I couldn't get just six pictures, but I do have this is what the FTW original ECW title looks like. Okay. Uh, okay. I need a few seconds to do the math so in my head. These are six titles. Of so six belts. Yeah, six belts. Three of them world, a tag, an FTW uh, TV. And these are the legit ones, right? These are not like the kids' ones that you wrap yeah, around. Yeah, don't you think that that looks? Like, don't you think that that looks pretty legit? I mean, I don't think ECW. That looks pretty legit. I, mean, I don't I think just, ECW. I, make sure, I don't want you messing with me by showing one that's legit and then five of them got Velcro on it. This, okay. is, quite, right. this is quite. This is quite a reserved bid I'm going for here. Ooh, dear. All right. Uh, all right. All right, Matt. Okay, I've gone for twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Twelve thousand five hundred. That's reserved. Yes. Two thousand and one. The year they closed down. That's that's topical, Graham. You can find this for ECW belt collection, all three versions, world title, TV title, tag title, FTW title, for twenty seven fifty. <sighs> So it looks like Matt's gonna man. Be I'm I was really when that price tag came up, and I was actually seriously worried because Matt said, I'm gonna do some math, and I saw him go into his calculator. So I knew he was thinking, like, okay, I paid 450 at WrestleMania times yeah, by six is 2700. And if you'd have done that, you would have been really, really close. Yes, but ECW original merch is extremely collectible, Graham. That's that's quite yeah. a low, that's quite a low amount. That's what I was thinking would be in the upper. Like nearly twenty grand, I was I think you'd be nearer. So I, I I'm actually shocked by that. So uh, the next one, I was actually I actually talked to my uncle occasionally about old wrestling because he used to watch wrestling in the fifties and sixties when he was a kid. Uh, number one hundred, Bruno San Martino versus Pedro Morales signed nine thirty seventy two wrestling program and ticket, uh, and that looks like this. Bruno San Martino. 
one of the greatest of all time. Um, so sign poster and tickets. Poster and tickets. Oh, is, is, is it in a frame? I don't believe it is in a frame. Because that would have because that would up the price by at least five dollars. So okay. Um that would up the price for the shipping as well. Yes, it would. Oh, does this include shipping? No, none of this includes shipping. Damn okay. It. All right. okay. That makes Good. a big difference. And typically All right, I'm ready when you are, Matt. Um I'm gonna I'm guessing at this one. I'm, okay. I believe Matt went first last time, so go ahead. All right, I'm playing tactical now. The last few, you've been way over, so I'm just going to go super low. Ten bucks. What? It's, it's I don't think low. it's ten bucks, but I think you're, I'm going to... I want all the money bucks. afterwards. That's, see, that's what bucks. I figured. I figured you were going to go way too high. So I, I was going to put one cent, but I was like, all right, I'm not putting one cent. I'll just so you can find... Bucks. You can find the number 100 Bruno San Martino versus Pedro Morales signed 93072 wrestling program and tickets for 10 grand. <gasps> Shut up. Oh my God. The great, That's one, of the, one of the greatest of all time, Graham. I think it's because I'm not both, arguing about that. I think, but... both, I think it's because both of them have passed. So, like, you can't get that anymore. Like, you can't get Bruno San Martino you know, signed anything anymore, you know? I got a Jim Nyhart autograph shortly after he died, and I paid, I think, $10 for it. But, oh, my gosh. You got a good deal. I'm not comparing him to Bruno San Martino. I realize Bruno is more significant. But, you do a wow, good deal. Not, not a factor of 100. Uh, all right, the next one. The Package, DVD by Steve Austin, Dolph Lundgren. Very good. Uh, this is, of course, a movie starring both Dolph Lundgren and Steve Austin. What year was it? 2000, 2008 to 2012, definitely. Okay. Hey, we're not on Netflixopedia yet. Come on, <clears> stick <throat> to the. You can't ask for a clue yet. Uh, Netflixopedia, but. Oh, well, so apologies, apologies, of course. Misspoke. Graham, <laughs> I was merely asking for stuff in the description. I was only, that's all I was asking. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, $3.50. Oh no. Oh dear. I'm in trouble. I think you got this one, Matt. Eleven dollars. Oh, you can find the package DVD by Steve Austin Dolph Lundgren. Very good for $7.95. Yeah, I knew I was in trouble there. Knew I was in trouble. Oh dear. Fully loaded WWE John Cena US Spinner replica title belt. Uh this this actually took a while to find. Um where did it go? <laughs> it's there, right down your. I don't think the picture is a uh, is very helpful, but you know if it is. Well, we're not going to see it spinning on a picture, are we? So no. you didn't get a gift or something for this. I, you can't use gifts here. It's weird. Um, I oh, no, know. I don't have. A, I don't have a picture, unfortunately. Very unprofessional. My but. son has one, so I can visualize it. Not the replica, but a cheapo knockoff version. Um. Oh, we have a picture. Whoa, look at that. That's Ooh, one. that's pretty nice. Does that change any of your answers? Massively. Uh, that does look a lot nicer than the original price I had. I I'm thought it dropped one. mine. Unfortunately, it does not come with a lawn chair. Uh, Matt? <laughs> that's a real shame, but I think I'm in enough of an armchair right now. Uh, my guess, it was 120 to us for the picture. It's now 85 bucks. 85? Oh, jeez. Oh, this is going to be painful either way around for one of us. 725. Well, you can find the uh, fully loaded WWE John Cena US Spinner replica title belt for 2100. Whew. Wow, that's a big sigh of relief there. I thought I'd gone up too much. I had five twenty-five originally. I don't know, went up to seven twenty-five. It looks nice, but I'm not paying twenty-one hundred. It does. Oof. All right. The next item is WWF Edge SmackDown Tron Ready Series Six Jax Pacific Two Thousand New. 
pain. Ooh, I like the tactics of this game. Like, it's not really thinking what price it really is. It's thinking what price is your opponent going to put down and then getting the... I like this. This is a... I'm not even thinking about you. I'm thinking about how much I'd pay for it. Oh, I know you're not thinking it on that level, but I'm game. Th I'm thinking game theory right now. I'm, I'm adding is, extra levels. This, into is, it. this is psychology. You keep that to yourself, and I'm being, <laughs> do what I'm doing. This is game strategy at another level. Because I'm not putting necessarily the price that I think the object is. I'm putting the price that I think will get me the four points. So it's edge, um, for, and that's back that WF, of course. So you can't get WF ones anymore. Okay. Okay. All right, Matt. How much do you think this is? Forty-five. I'm guessing you're way off. Ooh, and that's not too bad. I got quite a room here. Seventy-five, seventy-five. Well, you can find WWF Edge SmackDown Toronto Ready Series Six to Jack Pacific Two Thousand New for twelve dollars. Half a point goes to Matt. The six of them? No, no, it's, no it's series six. Oh, I thought there were six of them. No, well, I still would have gone. Oh, gee, I would have gone over the top, man. I was working out about fifteen dollars. I was going, yeah, twelve dollars a figure approximately. Then seventy-five. Oh, I thought you said there were six of them. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. He only gets half a point. I don't care about half. The next one, the last one of this edition of The Price is Black, 1998 Comic Images WWF Superstars with a Z. The Rock Dwayne Johnson's RC number 15 PSA 10 GM, GEM Mint. So this is, of course, a The Rock trading card. Oof, I don't know anything about trading cards particularly. Look at that back. I believe that is um I want to say road dog. Oh, you didn't know. This is going to be embarrassing the Yeah, I don't even have a clue map for this. I'm going to uh, try and base it on baseball cards and I'm going to base it on I don't know the rarity of that card at all. So this is going to be this could be way way out. $40. $40. Matt I'm hoping it's a rare one. Um, if it's it's mint condition, then I'm going to make my most ambitious claim yet. Oh. <laughs> and you can't go over, and it's got to be over that to get. Oh my gosh! Well, you can find uh. the 1998 comic image, comic images, WWF superstars, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, RC number 15 PSA 10 GEM mint. For one hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety five cents. No freaking way! How on earth did you get a point? How do you get four points for that? Holy cow, man! I got a kudos on that. On that, Graham. I, for two Jeez. reasons: one, I watch his show. Um, two, <laughs> you watch one episode. Good job. Uh, and two, uh, the Rock. Mint condition trading card, very, very collectible. Sir. I bet you he's the biggest star in the world right now. And it's WWF, which means it's even rarer now. Wow. I'm quite pleased with that. I've no idea what the scores are, though, but that half a point makes all the difference. But, well, the scores are in second You're place with, with 12 points is Graham, and first place with 16 and a half points, it is the Mad Attack. Nice. So, of course, the next game is a classic Netflixopedia. And I so, think the comment I put in Twitter is, just go ahead and give me zero for this round right now. Over, <laughs> Your lead is safe, Matt, I promise you. Love it. Over, over the course of season one, we have made many jokes and have had many laughs at Netflix's expense about their horrible, terrible synopsis of various films and TV shows. And to prove that it is very hard or not, I have concocted all of these descriptions based on what I can remember about the movie or what the poster of the movie looks like. Your job is to guess what the movie is with no penalty if a hint is asked for. Uh, the hints are as follows. Year of release, genre, and an actor who plays a prominent part in the film. Now, since this is off the top of my head, you may not get the most correct answer, but I am doing my best and using the internet is for hacks. Uh, and each of these are five points. So all of these, because Graham has said that he has he doesn't watch movies, uh, all of these are either English-British movies or uh, 
children movies. Oh, jeez. <sighs> So, yeah, I think my claim is I haven't seen a non-PG film at the cinema in probably 15 years. Well, ho hopefully this helps. <laughs> After his wife and children are murdered and his remaining son is kidnapped by an Australian dentist, this father and his dim-witted friend make the attempt to travel the world to, to find the lost child. And you'll be writing these down. <laughs> You can't, ask, totally remember, you, you can't ask for hints. So, uh, year of release. 2004? So after his wife and children. So after his wife and children are murdered and his remaining son is kidnapped by an Australian dentist, this father and his dim-witted friend make the attempt to travel the world to find the lost child. I have at least a guess. I've seen what to do if you don't know the answer from watching previous shows. He's using his phone to Google this, right? Computer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Matt? Ah, uh, Graham. That, you are Graham. I'm going to guess it's not Ned Kelly. Matt? Johnny English. Well... This is, of course, the Ellen DeGeneres starring Finding Nemo. Of course it is. Oh, very. Of course. Bravo. Keep Bravo. on spinning. I, keep on yeah, spinning. If I had a cap on, I'd be tipping it to you right now. Well played, sir. I'm well gonna, played. I'm going to get such a kick from, from Chris for that. We've actually got a picture of Crush in our front room. <laughs> All right, the second one. An English king who did not have a bunch of wives or leave Catholicism wins a war but also maybe finds love? Well, while they're pondering about all of these, make sure to it's follow easy them. To give a test at, a take a test. Oh. Remember to follow them at Good Bad Wrestle on Twitter, at MGP Graham on Twitter, and at the Mad Attack UK on Twitter. Oh, um, how about the year again? I forgot we can ask for help because we clearly oh. need it. 1951? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad I asked for that. Prominent actor? Oh gosh. Chester Nottingham Billings the Fourth. <laughs> if that helps you in any way, shape, or form, that would be amazing. Um all right, I have a guess at least, I guess. Oh um that actually wasn't a hint and was a hint at the same time, and I'll tell you guys why afterwards. I'm hoping you'll allow a little bit of leniency. I have a film in mind, but I can't remember the exact title. Yeah, yeah. I'm and my spell is probably atrocious on this one. Matt? I'm going to pass. All right. Um, the only thing I can think of from that era that's got King in the title is something like, it's like uh, Yankee Connecticut and King Arthur's Court or something like that. Um, That's the only know, thing I can think of from that era. This is, of course, the very popular British film, Henry V. Um, a movie I've never seen, but the poster <sighs> sure did look cool. And uh, that that was not a real actor. That was me trying to do an English accent to tell you guys that it was a British film. <laughs> well, you said that all British films or all, all kids' movies. Yeah. <laughs> so I get, I get it that is, much. From the clue, it clearly wasn't Henry VIII. So, but I was, yeah, yeah that's you, I was really the director. You tried to lead us that way, but yeah, we didn't. I yeah, was once again originally really thinking this was going to be an animated one, so I was really messing me up to begin. You enough of right. the clues, then, Mike, they were fine. Yep. All right. This, the next one. I'm really proud of this one. Sam Smith sings over a British spy, and there's a train. And I'm pretty sure the title of the movie is The Agency of the Bad Guy, but it could just as easily be The Agency of the Good Guy. I have never seen this era of the franchise, if I'm being honest. Easy. Oh, and I'm going to be pissed because I know the song as well. I'm trying to sing the song in my head right now so I can get to the chorus. This is easy. Oh, that's not the title of the film. Shoot. Oh. You got hints. Oh. He doesn't need one. He's got it already. Bloody He's hell. 
I can't remember. And the annoying thing is, you got it, Matt, right? Oh, yeah. The annoying thing is, I watched, and you know, I told you, I watched all these films over like um, a 10 day period. And I'm trying to remember. So it's the, one of the latest ones. So it's the one I had to rent from the library because it wasn't on Netflix. Um, it's the latest. Uh, I guess I guess I'll have, I'll have to ask for the clue then. Uh, give me the actor who plays M in this. I don't know. Just give me an actor. Former WWE champion Dave Bautista. <sighs> oh, no. Uh, I got to take a stab, Matt, and I don't. I think that's too early. I don't think it is that one. Good with that. All right. Pretty sure the song was riding on the wall. I'm going to go with Spectra. Wait, Spectre, not Spectra. Spectre, sorry. Woo! Yes. Did I pull that out of the fire the last week? Yay! My first ever one from all the times I've been watching as well. I wrote that. I, I knew it before, before he'd even finished. He said, said Man Smith sings. I'm like, that's it. Easy. It was riding on the wall. Was the song there, right? I think so. I, I don't know. It was terrible. I <laughs> I, I, I have I, a whole playlist of Bond themes. I love. They're listening not all to good. Themes. Yeah, well, I didn't the, say they're all good, but I have pro- I can rank them though as the well, so I can listen to the top ones first. Live and Let Die is, is a is in my That's heart. A, it's a banger. That's a banger. It's like two different songs. The next one, funny Brits tried to find Jesus's cup or something. Uh, if one of you would like to ask the actor, uh, I don't need to. I don't either. I just need to make. I need to make sure I get the right one. That you can, you, can, you still can though. No point. No points deducted. No, because I'm going to ask for the genre because that's totally useless. That will not help him at all. Uh, comedy. comedy. <laughs> yeah, comedy. I've got three to choose from to make sure it's the right one. Uh oh. I'm channeling the wrong one to you right now, Matt, okay? I'm giving you uh, 15 seconds now to come up with it. God, I, I'm going to go with this one. It might be wrong, but I'm sticking with it. All right, we'll stick with you. Raiders of the Last Ark. Oh, shoot. Did I get totally the wrong part of this then? That's not a comedy, though, anyway. Surely oh, yeah, it's uh, Monty, oh, hell yeah, Monty it Python is. and the Holy Grail, surely. Yeah, it is quite clearly Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> Never seen it. When you said it was between three, I was like, why on earth would you pick, like, Life of Brian? Like, it's clearly not that yeah. one. And I was going... I thought, I thought he was going down the route of where they were looking for um, the Holy Grail in the, uh, effectively... In the um, in the uh, Indiana Jones films, which are comedy films, let's face it. Ah, well, that comedy clue would have been helpful if you'd have listened to it. Whew. No, that it was, was uh... Indiana Jones is a comedy. I don't. <laughs> an action comedy. I don't think. I don't think. Nah. Of it. I think there are comedic moments, like when he just pulls out and shoots the guy. I think that's like yeah. a funny moment, but it's I don't. It's action really comedy. It's not a comedy film. There's no laugh track or anything in the background. That, that's a terrible that taste. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. No films have laughter tracks in them apart from very bad <laughs> B movies. Uh, the Room doesn't need a laugh track. That's such a good film. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, I've never seen it, though. Apparently. Oh my god, you need to. Like it is truly life changing. No, what the hell? I said that. You didn't react I am interviewing earlier. I'm interviewing for new guest hosts at Good Cop Bad Cop. You I've cannot have not seen, seen Monty Python films. I'm sorry. I've, that that's I've not a, that's seen, non-negotiable. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen the Holy Grail. Oh my gosh. I've seen and and my opinion of you was low anyway. Wait a, second, but... wait a second. Indiana Jones is not British, and I said funny Brit though. Yeah, I, yeah, I was very say, bad I British accents. Stolen as a baby, this brute man must prove that he has what it takes to defeat his devilish uncle and return home high on top of the mountain. Oh shoot, he knows it. Darn it! To be fair, he did think that it was Indiana Jones, so maybe he does not have it. I'll ask for the year, please, Micah. Ninety-seven. Ooh. Now, 
Uh, I don't. He did say these aren't necessarily the most accurate descriptions. So, all right, I have, I have an answer, but Matt, can I get an can I get an actor? James Woods. James Woods. Yeah, who I am not, by the way. I am not James Woods, the actor. No, right no now. you are not. I'm but glad you cleared that up. That that's well, been the elephant no. in the room this whole uh, episode. That is an old improv bit that I used to do whenever we were reporters. I would raise my hands and I would say, James Woods, you know, the actor. As if there's other James Woods. <laughs> wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. And then, and then when I would raise my right hand and I would say, Jake Tapper, CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Um, okay. I think I, if I get this one wrong, Chris will disown me. All right. Now, I've never actually seen this film, which is a bit of a hot take, and I'm hoping the person part is misleading, but Lion King? Um, I think it's Hercules. It is, in fact, Hercules. I've never seen it, so I don't know. Lion King was never stolen of the baby. Well, I didn't know. I've never seen it, Matt. But I know that there's an in uh, there's isn't there like an evil uncle in it or something? Or yes, and that's evil... what I thought at first, and then I made it. That's why oh. I had to repeat it. And when I'm it like, said ninety seven, I was like, "That's got to be in the right 92. ballpark." I know that's one of my uh, things that I people do not satisfy with me at all. That I've never seen that film. I've never seen the film. I've seen the memes. What's that over there? Um, and all those different things like Nottingham. That. You must never go there. Yeah, there you go. That yeah. Yeah, uh, Lion King came out in '94. Don't try to do me with movie release dates. I'm pretty good with the with them uh, based off of movies that I've seen. Chef Kiss. Oh, and uh, also Finding Nemo totally came out in 2003. I just uh, I don't think that no. would have helped. No. <laughs> they would have helped that point though. The next one, uh, and uh, to be fair, this is what uh, Google says is a British film. I I don't think this is necessarily a British film. Uh, a game show. Contestant answers questions via flashbacks of his life. Please don't know this one, Matt. Does anybody want to? Anybody need a hint? Or looks like you got. Nah. Good. Nah, nah, I think we both got this one. Slam book me in there. Yeah. Yep. Now, I could give Matt. Points off because he put a space making slum dog it, too. It hard. automatically get put us a space in. I'm joking. Oh. He really wasn't. He's so sensitive. You're just trying to having told him he must behave himself. You're trying to get him to show his gesture. He was close. I've been up for 19 like hours, Graham. Give me some slack, all right? All right. The next one. It is 10:30 where you are, so it's here. The buff is half full. Uh. The next one, guns plus knives plus iambic pentameter? Don't mind if I do. This the literal modern take on a literary classic follows two lovers over a couple of days as their feuding families attempt to end each other in mortal combat. I, I, the internet just broke up a little bit in the middle. I didn't quite catch all of it. Can you just repeat that for me, please? Guns plus knives plus iambic pentameter? Don't mind if I do. This literal modern take on a literary classic follows two lovers over a couple of days as their feuding families attempt to end each other in mortal combat. What the hell's is Naomi Parameter? Ah, that's what, yeah. I thought it would bro the internet had broken up. It wasn't. I just didn't recognize what that was. <laughs> Iambic Pentameter? You never heard of that? I've heard of it. I got killed it, Okay. Are you guys both, both Give me ready? Year. I'm thinking. Uh, how, about, how about the year? 97? Mm -hmm. Or 96. It's 96 or 97. I couldn't make it up in my mind. That's... It could be anything. Which doesn't help. You, you, could, you could do more than one hint. I assume the genre is going to be action, so. I've got a guess here, but I'm not sure it's a British film. 
I, I got a guess from around the right era, but I don't think it's anything to do with your description that you said. I'm basically ignoring that part, except for picking out a couple of words. Um, Romeo and Juliet. See, yeah, that that was the th when it said the literary connection, that was my first thought as well. But the other stuff, I don't, th I haven't seen the Romeo and Juliet film. I just didn't remember that side of it. Um, it's not Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, but that's it is not. Just chewed up. So. Unfortunately, I can't give Matt the the thing ever because Romeo plus Juliet, the Leonardo DiCaprio film. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a modern type of guns and knives, all that yeah. sort of stuff, and it's mm. actually it's, we had to watch it for English. Yes, and I did too. I think, I think everybody has to watch it for English. We had to watch it for English, and it was terrible because it's in a modern setting, but it's still talking in old English. I'm like, yeah, that's the I, got, I can't say what's in my head right now. Okay, that was the iambic pentameter, like the way that they were talking. I, I see, I see. I wish I'd gone with just the literary clue, but I didn't. I just from the pictures I've seen, I didn't remember any guns or anything like that, or knives. So I went yeah. away from that. And this was around the time when I had, and I don't know why. It seems very petty now. I refused to watch any film that had Leonardo DiCaprio in it. I think I finally broke that um, in about 2015. I stuck with uh -huh. it for a long time. I can't remember quite the reason why. I think I thought. I think you can say douchebag, right? I think that's. Yeah. I accept Graham, this recording. Graham, I can cried. Say. Wait. I cried when Kate Winslet died and he didn't. And he. I haven't and, seen Titanic yeah. yet, so no spoilers, please. It <laughs> happened 100 years ago. I haven't seen the film yet. I don't know. Don't, don't, it's a bit of a spoiler, Graham. It sinks. <laughs> well, there's a sequel, so obviously there's there something. There is a sequel! There is! Ty oh, come on. We can look this one up. There's Titanic 2. There is Titanic 2 is, is a boat. Titanic there is, is a sequel. There's a sequel boat to in a way. So you didn't know that, Matt. Oh, come on. I think I've seen ironically, I think I've seen the sequel, but haven't seen the original. James Cameron did not make a sequel to that. And I didn't say it was James Cameron. I didn't say it was James Cameron, but there is a film called Titanic 2. I'm sure there is. Oh, oh, it's it's from 2010. Oh, it does exist. Yeah. Oh, oh it oh it sure does exist, Matt. Oh, it exists. I um, will not uh, the, be making that part question. of my viewing. All right. And the good one. question would be, what is the IMDb rating? It's got to be like 3.1 or something, I'm guessing. All right. Then the the last one of, okay. of this. Uh, yes. It's 5.3, by the way, with a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as high as 5.3? Jeez. Good. I'm gonna guess the director voted it ten, and then that wouldn't be that would have been enough to carry it that high. The true story of the, of a large tooth singer who changed his band and the world with his charisma and innovative personality. Hmm. Yeah, please. Two thousand eighteen. Oh, that's really man. You but, know it. I think I, you're I'm messing with it. I think you know this. Is, I'm going to need it now, or, or I can't give you points. I, Matt uh, knows this. He's messing with us. I actually do not know this one. It's gonna really? Kick, it's going to kick me, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm shocked then, because unless I'm totally mistaken, it's um, the gay icon from uh, Queen, and I'm hoping that the film's called We Will Rock You. I'm hoping. Mm, it's called Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Oh, no! Is that the theatre production then, We Will Rock You? Yep. Oh! At the end of round two, it is Graham with 27, Matt with 31 and a half. You that you is did, you did really well, brutal. Right now, actually. Um, Ouch. So the next, the this last game... Uh, oh, there's a third game? Oh, I thought that game. was it. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Oh, there's still life in this then. All right. I'm, I'm, uh, let me get myself seated again. Uh, it's Valentine's season, uh, but date means two things. Uh, in the podcasting, uh, in podcasting terms, and apparently in real life, Derek and myself are both young. Uh, so your job in the last game is to tell me how many years an event happened before I was born. The number closest to the date will get four points. Uh, and so I this is, is this a math? Can you just? I just want to check what you said there. This so, sounds like a math game. So I we've got to work out what your age is, yes. and then we've got to work out have, how many years before. Okay. I have not disclosed how old I am to you guys. 
See, and I will not be telling you throughout the game, but you might figure it out. Uh, and I'm not, and I, yeah. So, uh, uh, you, the so is it whoever, it's, who gets the closest, right? It's not like yeah. if you go over, it's not yeah. like the first one. Whoever gets okay. the closest. Uh, okay. I mean, if you go over, that means like I was alive. Uh, uh, the closest date will get four points. Uh, and yes, I really was never alive during any of these events. Okay. So there are six of them. So there's a total of... Uh, How many points is there for this? Four. Oh. Four each, right? Oh, that half point might actually count now then. <sighs> it's the coveted half point for a reason. So the first one... Uh, oh no. I have the answer in one of these. Let me just... First one because While you're Grant, fixing that, Matt, I remember you appeared on Quiztastic 4, and you were amazing at this round. There was a similar one, Name the Year, and I was playing alongside as I was listening, and you absolutely crushed it and uh, made it to the final. I don't know which round it was, but I know you're really good at these. So. Yeah, that's, that's, what I knew the, that's what I knew what year they were working with. Um, I may or may not know how old he is. So mm. this is very funny. Uh, then, uh, so I... The, I gave an advantage to each of you, an advantage uh, question. So uh, because Graham likes baseball, uh, the year the New York Yankees won their first World Series. How, so you're writing down not the year, but the number of years between that day and my birth year. Ooh. Okay. Uh, all right. I got my answer. I'm going to be still thinking. Okay. I certainly know the answer to the, the, the baseball question within one year. So the only question is how close am I to your age? Yeah. Okay. My guess is it happened 75 years before you were born. A little bit higher, 80. Well, Jiminy Crickets, 75 is the answer. Well, I got to adjust my uh, guess then for your age then, because I'm pretty sure I know the year the Yankees first won the World Series. All right. All right. I got to adjust my heart my, going forward. my heart is a pound like during Chris, I think, four grand. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> And that was the question that favored me, so I could be in real yeah. trouble now. Um, like, what was the first year the Power Rangers came out or something? Like, oh, um, oh, no. It's actually... It, it actually, I, I thought that that would be a big advantage. Uh, <laughs> all right, the, the next one. Uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is published. Well, that's totally messed me up now. Oh, we're talking the book. Oh, we're talking book, not film, aren't we? Hold on. Book. Oh. Um, shoot. Probably a book maybe your oldest son has read or maybe is interested in. Well, now it's making me doubt my uh, guess for the base. Perhaps I was wrong on the baseball then. Oh. He thinks I'm younger. No, I think you're older than I thought you were then. Or I'm way off on the baseball figure. Um, all right. I don't know. So I'm going to go with five. Matt? One. One. Matt will get the point. Because, wow. Okay. What was the answer? Uh, one. Jeez. Right. All right, this one is the one that favors Matt. Uh, the uh -oh. Nintendo Entertainment System is released. And I think he knows your age as well now, which is going to help him too. The problem is, I don't know the exact year the NES came out. So, uh, no, no pressure, uh, but Grant, you will have to get the next four right, which is the remaining questions, <laughs> in order to win it. Oh, that's not happening, that's for sure. Okay. Um, all right. Um, 
Sorry, can you just repeat the question one more time just to make sure? The Nintendo okay. Entity System is released. Mm. Yeah, and I and I do think Matt knows how old I am now. I think he does. Yeah, honest, I'm still torn a... between. I'm still torn between a couple of dates now, and I'm that Yankee. That baseball question has totally messed me up because I honestly thought I knew the baseball question. All right, I, I have an answer, but this is could be way out for a couple of reasons because I'm not sure on either of the two answers. Okay, Matt? I need to do math quickly. Um, so, um... you got ten seconds. That's okay. not gonna be enough. Get okay. your socks that's, off. Start counting on my, your feet. My educated, my educated guess because I've forgotten the year it came out. Uh, just primarily because it's the year. It's the yeah. It's uh, thirteen. Oh, did I misremember then? All right, I went three. Is it 40 years, not 30 years then? I seem to remember um, there was a recent anniversary. The 35th anniversary of Mario was last year. Matt will get uh, the point. Matt will get the point for that one. Is correct that right? answer was? Uh, the correct answer was uh, 15. Hmm. Uh, Toy Story releases in theaters. Oof. Ah, ah. Okay. Well, now that that's rough. Um... <laughs> oh, is that Toy Story Two? Shoot, I thought I had it, but then I'm thinking that might be Toy Story Two now. I can see it. Um... Let me see. I'm all set. <laughs> Did you know that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm joking about the month thing. I, I know each year that each film came out in. I mean, so do I. Yeah, I went to the for all of them. I don't know if you'd be this sneaky, but you might be. All right, I have an answer. Negative one. Um... No, that's wrong, Ben. Yes, that's right. Three. Matt will get the... the it is three. Mm. All right. The second to last one, the penultimate. Genes are invented. Mm. Okay. I might have to play a little safer than that. Denim. Because I'm only playing for pride right now anyway. Yes, you are playing for pride and the ability... I'm not going to try and go for the exact... I'm going to hedge my bets a little bit. I'm hedging my bets a bit as well. This is an educated yeah. guess based on uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. 130. Ooh, 113. So hold on. Graham will get the work point. Out Graham will get the point. It is 125. So in my head, I thought, yeah, I had a an idea which it was a little I was torn between the two. I have a feeling it I was, knew it was on was, an 1870s, yeah. So and because originally I had I was thinking of the gold rush, and then I was like, no, it, it was after that, and then it was like 1870s in my head. That's why I had to Change it a little bit. Mm. All right. And the uh, because it's wrestling, it all comes back to wrestling. Bruno ah. Sammartino loses the WWF championship to Ivan Koloff at Madison Square Garden. He can give you the answer in seconds. Actually, I can't. All right. I can't. I actually know this date. <sighs> okay. Matt? I pass. Uh, 
So what does that count as? Oh, I can't change my answer. Anyway. I would, if if I was gonna guess, it'd be seventy. It would be nineteen seventy-one, but I don't think it is that year. So well, that's not what the question is. It's how many years before. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Well, I'm gonna have to give him the gram. It, gram. It is twenty-seven. Uh so I in, was thinking it was seventy-two in my head. Ah, uh, so. In second place with 35 points, it is MGB Graham. Uh, and your winner, moving on to being a ranked player probably, with 47 and a half points, it is the Mad Attack. It's time for the smug face. Well done, Matt. <sighs> I enjoyed that. Well, it was fun. Again, you can find them at Good Bad Wrestle on Twitter, at MGB Graham on Twitter, and at The Mad Attack UK on Twitter if you enjoyed their antics today. But anything else you guys would like to plug? Um, there's a lot of other great shows on Vignette that will be that you guys should go and check all of them out. And of course, go check out everything from Devoid Entertainment, especially specifically Devoid. It would be a miss if I didn't give my uh, son's podcast a shout out because that's the only reason we're actually podcasters, Matt. So um, the MGB from my name comes from the at MGB wrestling uh, pod. Uh, and uh, my 13 year old son and I uh, review indie events right now. We're looking at specific wrestlers. We're picking two or three matches and reviewing them. Uh, I'm not sure when this episode comes out. So just go check it go check out that um, link on Twitter and you'll be able to find it there. Well, from all of us here at Devoid Entertainment, thank you to both of you. Uh, we're, we we frequent on each other's shows enough. Our fans cross over. So until next time, I'll see you later. We're out of here. Boom. <laughs>